Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Make Do and Mend. Um, this is a collection published by Michael O'Hara Books Limited. Uh, it doesn't have an author as such because this is a collection of reprints of World War II leaflets from the British government. Um, this was a very, very important and common element of um, life on the British home front during World War II because materials were scarce, people were subject to rationing, um, not just rationing of food, but rationing of clothes, of fuel for cooking, heating, homes, um, all that stuff. Basically everything, with the exception of some vegetables, pretty much everything was subject to rationing, which meant everybody had to make the most of what they had. And so the British government printed a ton of leaflets on a ton of different subjects about how to um, basically maximize home economy. Um, so there are pamphlets like uh, how to look after rayon, simple household repairs, how to patch elbows and trousers, um, how to use large coke, that's coke, the fuel, like similar to coal somewhat, um, save fuel for battle, deft darns, the ABC of making buttonholes. There's, there's a ton of stuff here. Um, and basically the idea was if people can keep their clothes mended, if you can patch things, um, if you can sort of put in additional material as your children grow so they can keep wearing the same garments just with added material that in a way that still looks good, um, then you save a lot of material for the war effort. The cotton, the wool, the uh, rayon, whatever it is, if the civilian population is using less of it, then the military has more. And of course, this was incredibly important in World War II because as we know, the British were fighting Hitler in Europe, the Nazis in Europe, um, and they were fighting Imperial Japan in Asia. So, yeah, the British were the good guys, uh, as problematic as, as the British were, particularly in terms of the British Empire. But, um, so that, that's what this is. It's, it's a collection of these World War II government-written pamphlets about basically how to be thrifty and how to conserve what you have rather than needing to replace it. So, as a set of historical documents, it's really, really interesting. Um, as, a, as a book of, like, here's how you do particular things. Like, these pages, for instance, different ways of darning, different types of fabrics, different types of weaves, whatever it is. It comes with these very specific useful instructions um, let me find you another good sort of visual one so I mean a lot of them because a lot of them are visual and they're they have a degree of document design I mean it's document design 1940s style but nonetheless document design right like we've got images here, we've got some illustrations, um, things like this, in addition to written descriptions. And the pamphlets themselves are quite short, usually. They're, they're a few pages long, which means that they're relatively quick and easy to consume, which is ideal when what you want out of these pamphlets is, I need a piece of information, I can quickly access it, now I have that information, I can put it into practice. It's a really, really smart way of doing things in a pre-digital world. 
and the fact that we have reproductions of these pamphlets specifically that they are that they look on this page how the original pamphlets would have looked is really really useful uh, for, for historians for researchers obviously historians it's probably better if you can go and find original versions of the pamphlets which would be a much better archival research uh, resource but these are less subject to wear and tear right this is a hardback book these are mass produced you can get any number of copies of these so whereas the original pamphlets would have been well used in the 1940s and my guess is not that many of them survive in good condition today you can use make do and mend as a baseline if you wanted to study domestic uh, home economics in the world war ii home front and it's, it's a fascinating thing right um that being said it's not an interesting read if you take this as a book it is not an interesting read it is not a page turner but these weren't meant to be these pamphlets weren't meant to be page turners they weren't meant to be exciting yeah there's there's some verbal cues some witticisms on occasion and things like that but they weren't meant for that they weren't meant to be interesting or exciting they were meant to be informative they are utilitarian and in that sense, they work really, really well. They do what they are supposed to do, which is to give specific instructions about particular topics for um, effectively maintaining your property, clothing, uh, linens, blankets, fuel conservation, et cetera, et cetera, on the home front. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. They are effective for their objective. It's also worth noting they were never really meant to be put together in a book and just read straight through. That wasn't the purpose of them. And so this as a book is a slightly ahistorical, odd, generic choice. Um, that being said, I don't know that there is much value in sort of sitting down and saying, I'm going to read, make, do, and mend straight through. It's probably not the wisest plan. It's probably something that you occasionally take a look at because it's, it's interesting in itself. Um, that being said, there is actually a big reason to potentially read this today. And it comes in the foreword by Jill Norman. Um, after giving some background on these pamphlets, what they were meant to do, what the context of them was, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, Norman writes: In the last last half century, we have come to take the availability of all types of fuel for granted. We have central heating in our homes, and we use washing machines and spin dryers, cookers, refrigerators, radios, televisions, and computers. We drive everywhere. We waste appalling amounts of foodstuffs and all kinds of other materials until fairly recently without reckoning the cost too carefully. Now, with more awareness of carbon emissions, green issues, and the changed geopolitical environment, we are belatedly realizing some far-reaching measures are needed. While many of the proposals to save fuel made so urgently in these leaflets are not relevant today, there are lessons to learn. The global urgency to act is just as necessary as was the wartime effort. And I think that's an interesting and worthwhile point. I mean, I, as much as I wish I wasn't, I am very much caught in the American consumerist worldview of late capitalism. I have more stuff than I need, and I frequently buy more stuff that I don't necessarily need. This, of course, is a, a huge problem for the future of the planet. And while individual consumption is not necessarily the most driving factor compared to, say, the emissions of the U.S. military or China's industrial complex or something like this, individual consumption does drive a lot of the production that goes into global capitalism. And so they're definitely, 
the individual can change their behavior, which won't solve the problem, but it will help mitigate, particularly if demand goes down across the board, then production necessarily follows, right? If there is less demand, prices drop, it becomes less efficient to manufacture more and more and more stuff, which means emissions go down. It's not a bad thing to consider.